Hello, hello. Good evening, folks. Sorry for the uh, tardiness. I uh, had some trouble getting started, and then I also had to go and get some tea. Okay, so let's see. You can't hear this delightful sound that is plaguing my ears at the moment. How are you guys doing? Hey, zombie. An actual sports game I love. Sean Robinson. Hello. All your base are belong to war. <laughs> and Dire 51 with the question on everyone's mind. Is it truly a series when there was only one entry? Hey, Richard. Good evening to you. And Zombie says, I wish there were more. Yeah, you know, good, good question. I, and in fact, oh, hey, finishing finals. Awesome. Congratulations. I hope, hope they go well. Hey, this isn't Barbie. Wait a minute. What am I doing here? See, I was, uh, I was running behind. Give me one second here. Let me fix that. As much as me might want to play Barbie, this is actually Cyber Cyber Stadium Events Base War Wars. Um, yeah, let's fix this. So actually, I had a little crisis, a couple crisis crises involved with this. Uh, the first was questioning whether I should even be streaming it this week because in the app that I use to keep track of my games, it's labeled as simply Base Wars. But everywhere else I looked it up, it's, it's uh, known as Cyber Stadium Series Base Wars. And um, and I that's not alphabetically next. It should be... It should be in the seas. So I debated whether I needed to switch with uh, Battle Tank this week. And then I decided most people, I think, only know this game as Base Wars. Um, and uh, in fact, it is the only Cyber Stadium series game. So I decided I would just stick and re re numbering everything that I'd set up would be a pain. So I decided to just uh, stick with it. So we're doing Base Wars, even if it is Cyber Stadium Base Wars. The other crisis um, involved the fact that my cartridge does not seem to be working. I just cleaned it tonight. Um, in, admittedly in a, in a hurry, before I was getting the spud to bed, who is blessedly asleep right now. Um, and uh, I didn't get to, to test it out beforehand. So it could also be a bum cartridge. I don't know. But I tried for a few minutes to get it working. Getting the blinking screen on this one, it is not working. So, as my, even though I have the cartridge, and it is right here, and I hope to actually get it functioning, I'm going to try it out on the AVS, which is a little bit more reliable, um, and then try doing some other cleaning on this to see. I, I didn't realize this game actually has a battery pack in it, and so anything could have gone wrong with it. There's like the little gold sticker for the battery pack. Um, so, so I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna troubleshoot it after the stream, figure out what's going on, but. Then I thought, oh, maybe I need to not stream it this week after all. Turns out I shouldn't be streaming it this week, I guess. But uh, I decided to just go ahead as scheduled. I'm using my EverDrive for tonight. <clears throat> hey, Aldiner. Good game, but I much prefer Base Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> if I ever break alphabetical order, chaos will reign. Well, I've actually broken alphabetical order a couple of times. I know I streamed Gyromite out of order. Um, I jumped ahead because there was a little tie in to a story I had written uh, that was being published and so I jumped ahead to Gyromite and I think I also streamed Spelunker out of order again because I had a, a story that was relate, related to it it had inspired um, something I did in a, in a, in a serial that I was co-writing called, um, at the time it was called Alternus but now it's called uh, Control-Alt-Delete no, Control-Alt-Destroy uh, Control-Alt-Delete is what it's uh, referencing and um and so I, ju I jumped the order a couple times there and then of course when i was first starting out the stream whenever i got a new game i would just kind of go back to that 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 number that letter and i stopped doing that after a few of those um, which is why we're now in the second loop is my camera crooked i think it might be a little bit crooked here uh, it's, it's tripod that's the problem i think that might be better I don't know. Oh man, hey Captain Algebra, how are you? Welcome. I was I was hoping. I was hoping I checked last night. I was hoping that you were streaming, but you were not streaming. 
Spelunker is like the troll two of video games, the best worst game. I, I have a, I have a bit of an appreciation for uh, Spelunker, although I've not got not gotten very far in it. I feel like it is possible, and I do kind of like it, even even though it's very demanding. So uh, I'm in frame. Thank you. Yeah, I was. Thank you, Richard. I was worrying if it was crooked. The, I was I was basing it off of the shelves behind me because it sometimes the the camera gets gets a little bit out of whack. It's, it's, I've got it on a really really janky little tripod there. Um, yeah, I'm doing okay, Cap. I'm, I'm feeling better this week. I still have a little bit of, uh, lingering congestion, but overall I feel like I'm back to about 90, 97%. Still kind of busy. I'm like way, way, way behind on, on some revisions for a novel, um, sample excerpt that I'm supposed to be working on. And I've been plugging at it, but I'm a little bit behind. So I, I am not quite 100% free and free and clear. And then have a couple of other projects that were in the works um, that have not yet manifested. At least I don't have a contract for them yet, so I don't know if they're actually going to happen. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm semi semi busy, and uh, just with with work and and life and stuff, I just haven't had much gaming time lately. I played Jaramite. I do not have Rob Eldina. I wish I kind of wish I did, even though I don't think he's much of an asset. Um, I kind of just want him like in my life. I just want Rob in my life. Like I just want. Uh, him to hang out while I'm playing games, you know, just somebody to talk to um, when I'm not streaming. <laughs> uh, thinking about it, decided to keep playing Twilight Princess for the Cartridge Club. Cool. Well, as long as you're having fun, right? I should play Spelunker 2 with the English translation patch if I haven't already. Um, wait, did I buy... I did buy Spelunker 2. Does it need an English translation patch, Dire 51? Because... Uh, by the way, hi. Because um, it didn't seem to need... Like, I played it for a few minutes uh, when I got the cartridge. It seemed really cool. Um, but it didn't seem like it had a lot of uh, Japanese text to it. So I don't know if I need a patch for it. Um, if I were to get it working, the only issue was blinking. You might want to remove the 10 NES chip. Yeah, I know about I know about removing the chip, Eldiner. But generally, if the cartridges are clean, games work on my on my NES. So I and I've tried I tried other games on my NES tonight, um, and uh, they all work fine. So I, I'm inclined to think that I just didn't clean it well enough. Um, and if not that, then there might be something else wrong with the cartridge. So I'll have to check that out. But, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to clip the 10, the 10 NES, uh, chip thing there. I know it's easy, but I don't, I don't see any need to do it if the games are clean. Uh, Rob is a hindrance for sure. <laughs> you do that already, Dyer. Um, hey, DOA Hitman, how are you doing? There's a sequel. It's a different kind of BSL Diener, but it's pretty awesome. You have like multiple. You can switch between different characters, and they all have different abilities. Um, it's kind of a little bit more like Pitfall, I think, than Splunker even. <laughs> Dire Fifty One is definitely not a hindrance. Dire Fifty One is. Dire Fifty One is the reason why I now own a copy of the Cryon Conquest for the NES, um, which I have been eyeing since. Pretty much since I got back into retro gaming, and it's always been too expensive. It's always been really expensive, and I probably should not have purchased this. But Dire Fifty One made me an offer I couldn't refuse, so I, I took him up on it, and uh, now I own it. And I know it's not the best version of this game, but um, I kind of even just want it for the wacky like cover art. So we'll be getting to that one when we hit the gates, and I'm looking forward to that. There's enough Japanese text in Spelunker Two to require translation. All right, well that's good to know, Dire. I will, uh, I will, I will uh, definitely try playing the patch version then uh, when I get to it, or I'll, I'll give it a try, and then when I hit a wall, maybe I'll switch over. I don't know when I'm going to play these Famicom games anyway. At least I did have to write six thousand words on James Joyce. On the plus side, having projects must help keep me sane. Yeah, I'm kind of mixed on it, Richard, because like obviously I like writing, um, but at a certain point, writing became like a second job to me, without. I don't know, just, and, and it's awesome that I get to do, that I get to write and that I get to publish and, and have, have, have people read my stuff. It's, it's fantastic. But at a certain point it became work and in a very busy life where I already have another job and very little time to just kind of like play video games or relax or read or whatever, um, it's taken more of a backseat for me. So having those projects, it's just like, it's having a deadline. It's like having more work on me that I have to do. So it's, I'm sort of, I'm conflicted over it. Um, but at some point I'll, you know, the, the projects that I'm potentially going to be able to work on, I just dropped my teeth. 
Um, I just dropped my tea tea bag in some of my cup, like the little. All right, whatever. Um, <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna pull out the tea bag, but now I can't. Um, without burning my fingers. Um, the projects that I could potentially work on are really exciting ones. So if I get to do those, I'll be I'll be pretty excited. I'll be pretty happy. So let's see here. Is did I ever tell you about the game store that used to rob to hold business cards? I think you did mention that. I think that's a brilliant idea. Is this game over home run? Hey, Ron Mower. I have no idea yet. We haven't started playing it yet. I've just been uh, I've been chattering on. <laughs> Dire of the NES Mafia. The Mafia, kind of Richard. I mean, he he was definitely um, encouraging me to spend all that money on Famicom games, not in so many words, but uh, you know. By association, by um, by um, example, and uh, I need to slow down on that that sort of stuff. Especially, got to pay taxes. <clears throat> Excited to see me stream Crayon. Crayon, have you played it, Cap? Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that one. So we'll get to the case uh, in due time, I'm sure. <clears throat> Someone needs to do a ROM hack of Gyromite to make it one player. Hey, Moses Gaming, what's up? How are you doing? I'm doing well. I didn't spill the tea, Richard. I was I had a tea bag in there. Like it's just like a Lipton tea. And um the little I don't know what they call it, the tag, I guess, fell into the cup. So now I can't I can't steep it or, or dunk the and I can't pull it out. So I don't know. Whatever. Hey Jim. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't I, I as I as I talk about it, El Diener, I'm I'm second guessing that uh, I should be talking about this at all. Um, yeah, yeah. Does this game have a training mode, El Diener? I'm, I hope it does. I don't know. We, he's joking because we watched uh, uh, Omega, uh, not Omega Ace. I did see Omega Ace today, uh, online anyway. Um, it, ca the Comic Man was streaming um, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks this morning, which also reminded me of, of hopefully getting to, that, to play that with Captain Algebra soon. But um, we were making some train jokes. <laughs> and uh, Zombie was there too, of course. Yeah, Dire Fifty One is just a bad influence for sure. I mean, you made that whole website about Splatterhouse, Splatterhouse to encourage people to to play that you know morally um, depraved game, right? <laughs> One of my new writing projects is about magical prohibition during Fantasy Gangland Steampunk New York. Oh, that sounds very cool. You know, my friend Alia Johnson, Alia Don Johnson, wrote a book. Uh, set in like 1920s uh, Manhattan, um, I think it's called like Moonlight, um, and it's about vamp vampires during Prohibition. Really cool, really cool book. Uh, she's a fantastic uh, author. She mostly writes young adult and science fiction stuff. Um, but she did this great party for that book launch um, where it was kind of like a, a Prohibition party, like a speakeasy kind of thing. So we all dressed up for it. And we shot some footage there, and I edited a book trailer for her using footage from that event. And then Cora recorded, um, like, the narration for it, like an old-timey radio announcer kind of thing. Um, that, was a, that was a fun project. Um, but uh, Moonshine. It's called Moonshine, because it's a pun. So, uh, so, yeah, check that out sometime if you're interested in magical uh, prohibition stuff. Speaking of Wars game, I haven't bought the new Lego Star Wars yet. Um, I probably will get it at some point. I just I just picked it up for a friend, but um, I'll probably get a copy of it at some point. Codename Vic Viper. Hey, GMC. I'm not the only one streaming baseball games. Speaking of which, I guess I should actually get started on this, right? Yeah. Hey, Mateo. How are you? Oh, man, I love this game. Borrowed it from a friend once. Finally found a copy on vacation at a pawn shop in Virginia. All right. Well, awesome. We have a... Uh, hey, Chum Nasty. Hi. Jim says this game is rather annoying or boring to finish. Got to watch the AI play 20 games against itself. <laughs> and Cap, Cap picked up Lego Star Wars. Yeah, it looks like a pretty cool game. It was kind of like I thought that they were just going to um, kind of repackage this, the old Star Wars games because they definitely did a bunch of Star Wars games. Like, I, I played some of them. And uh, and I thought they were just going to repackage and add in, like, the new, the new movies to it. But it seems like they completely redid. Like, it's an entirely new game from... from you know, ground, the ground up, um, and it looks really good, so I probably will get that at some point, all right, I will actually, I will actually get started here, 
Had Skywalker Saga on pre-order forever. Finally came, gave up. At least kept getting bumped. All right, let's let's actually start the game. There, I did have to. I might have to pull up the manual at some point. Um, does everything look and sound okay? You guys can hear the the game such as it is, and you can hear me all right. I'm not using my headphones. I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing the headphones thing. Um, I don't think it's even necessary. Really, I have to have the volume down pretty low. Wait, did he just talk? I couldn't hear that. All right, so there's a play ball, open mode, pennant mode, and sound mode. Probably need more audio than that. Let's see here. I don't think the TV bothers the uh, stream too much. Everything's good. Thank you, Eldiner. Thank you, Dyer51. Very good. Always get lost and stuck in LEGO games. I always get kind of sidetracked by needing to collect all the things. GMC. Thank you, Moses Gaming. All right. So I know this this new overlay, the uh, the chat text is a little bit light on it, it, except for the yellow part of the chat text. Like the the first um, color that it picks seems to be random every time I stream. Like I don't pick that color. It just kind of comes up, no matter you know whatever I'm doing. Oh, I didn't I didn't tweet about this. I guess I should tweet about this. Hold on a second here. I was about to tweet about about the stream. I was about to tweet about the stream, and then I didn't. So, uh, we haven't really got it started yet. Let's just, uh, tweet about it. Do -do -do. people will drop by maybe not got a nice little group here so I think we're fine thought it would be that too played complete saga on DS as a kid and you get to play the home version until last year I think same developer of TM TMNT oh this is ultra right yeah it does sound like a TMNT game doesn't it did I say hi Chim Nasty hi Chim Nasty oh and Jim says he said yeah <laughs> Um, each robot has a unique feature. Yeah, let's take a look at the team here. Oh, can I change the name of it? Oh, yeah. What should we call them? Let's call them... In honor of, uh, the new Star Wars game, we'll call them the Skywalkers. Skywalkers, yep. How do I get down to the this bottom there? Do I just keep going like this? No. How do I change the uh, the lineup? Team C3PO versus Team R2D2. Do I need to na name both both uh, both of the teams? So if I hit, nope. I actually don't know how to change the lineup. Maybe you don't change the lineup in, uh... Hmm. Okay. Let's do... I guess we'll do Team B is, uh... Uh... Hmm. Fit, actually. It's supposed to be midichlorians, but I don't think I'll be able to fit them all, so I'm going to call them the midichlories. Or 
or something. <laughs> um, hey, Hector. How are you doing? Welcome. Star Killer would be the rival team. Oh, that's a better one. Mandalore. Metachlorians. Ah, we'll just leave it. Alright, uh, some weird combination of buttons to change the lineup. Okay, let me try that again. Wait, hold on. Maybe it's when I do play ball I have to do it? Hmm. I need to pull up the manual, I guess. Pull up the manual. Alright. Hmm. I guess we can go through the manual too, real quick here. Because there's a. There's a story here. Now you'll know what slugfest really means. At last it can be told how, at the turn of the 24th century, the game of baseball was changed forever. It happened in Cape Cod Peace, Florida, during the annual winter meetings. On the aluminum-paneled walls of the Posh Hotel's presidential room hung stirring portraits of baseball's all-time greats, legends like Cecil Rooftop Shingleton, Travis T.O. Justice, and Tip Rude Waiter. Ugh. Around the huge conference table sat a group of sour, seething executives collectively known as the baseball team owners. The issue before them, astronomical player salaries. A Solar League official had just ordered one of the weakest franchises to shell out $2.4 billion a year to Gomer Gohome Gomez, a lifetime 250 hitter. For hours, the owners debated their options until suddenly, Irving Flopid Flopilidopoulos, owner of the Boston Banshees, leaped from his chair and slammed his fist on the table. Robots, he exclaimed. The other owners looked blankly at each other, then smiles slowly crept across their faces as they realized they had found the solution. Replace the players with mechanical men. No more salary demands. Better yet, no more salaries. Just obedient automatons pre-programmed for action. The now-inspired owners worked feverishly that weekend to refine their new sport, which they christened Base Wars. Wow, they spent a whole weekend on it. The public was quickly captivated by this bizarre combination of baseball and gladiatorial combat played by an army of armor-clad cybernetic swingers. They especially loved the one-on-one -on -one battle royales for base possession, the loser of which is retired to the scrapyard. It wasn't long before Base Wars became the new intergalactic pastime. Gosh. Okay, well, edit teams. Uh, set up your press the control pad down, select team edit, press A buttons, edit team A. Okay, screen will display the name. To change a letter, yep. Now you can change the type of robots in your lineup to move the cursor up or down to a different line across and press and hold the B button, then press the control button in the desired direction. Really? Um, okay. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that works. Never bring a sword or a gunfight. Time for the deep lore. Tip rude waiter. We need this sport to be real. Okay, let's try this again. So we're going to do this. And so hold down B. Oh, yeah, you're right, Jim. You just got to hold down B. And then, what, do you change their names? Or change the type? Ah, oh, you can change. Okay, but I don't know what any of these things do. Alright, I mean, whatever. That's fine. That is fine. Select your team. Huh. There's no... Oh, well, I'll just use my team here. Go and use their team? Sure. Oof. Go and do nine innings? Really? Alright, we'll do a game. Man versus... Oh, okay. CPU, obviously, right? I guess I should have named them, like, the whatever those bots are called or something. Stormtroopers, right? That's not going to fit. Roger, Roger. The Roger Rogers. I don't know what those robots are called. Roger, Roger. Wish we had more extreme sports in real life. Surround the field with an electric fence. Give the players medieval weapons. Make Star Wars mandatory. 
gosh. Just a matter of time, I think. Alright, so... Oh, now I can change the starting order. I don't know how to do that. Oh, now that's just showing me the starting order. That's fine. Play ball. Whoops. Okay. Oh, jeez. Not doing great. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, I'm safe where I am, right? Oof. This is wild. Hmm, okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm really terrible at baseball. Human or a robot? Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty bad. The animations are nice. Hey, K2J. How are you doing? Well, let's pause. That's the Konami uh, pause sound. Skywalker's real enemy daddy issues. Well, see the color of the chat jing changed. Well, that's a better color now, so I guess that works. Uh, tanks are the strongest, the slowest. Andrews are balanced. Flybots are not much of anything. Okay, robot type also affects their special ability in combat. Okay, just so you guys are clear, I mean you know this already. I'm terrible at sports, especially um, baseball. All right, so I'm pitching now, right? Oh, grab the ball. I don't actually know how to control them out here. Are you going to get it? Nobody's moving to get it. I'm going to have to refresh my memory on the... Uh, on the controls here, because nobody's getting this... Uh, nobody's going for the ball. Hello? Really? What's going on here? Oh my god. Okay, I'll... Oh, wait, just come when he comes. Yeah, great. Hold on, I need to I need to refresh my memory. There's uh instructions here on how to control them. Repairs and stuff. Press to attack, press the swing pitch and attack, press hold and release for ultra fast pitch, yep. Press A and B simultaneously. Okay, for that's for fighting. To play the field, when a ball's in play, use a control pad to guide the nearest robot to it. Okay, how do I know which? Mm, all right. Okay, and then press hold the control pad in the direction of the base you want to throw to. Press the A button to throw it. To advance the base runner, press and hold the control pad left, right, up, or down. Hmm. All right, we'll see how that goes. Just like real baseball, confusing chaos. See, if you can't see where the where the the robots are in relation to the ball, then. Oh. <laughs> That's cute. What? Oh. Got that TNG font going on there.
Oh, go, go, go get the ball. Somebody. Oh my gosh, go get the ball. Okay, go, go, go. Alright. Whoops. It's not? Truly? Right into space. Press uh, direction and A to throw to a specific base or home. Yep. Hmm. Feels pretty polished. That's I'll go. I'll give it that much. Wow. They're very good. I'm terrible, and they're good. I, I'm gonna say Blades of Steel, that was a pretty early game. I'm guessing Blades of Steel came first. Needs more Robocop. <laughs> Blades was first. Soundtrack is pretty solid. Yeah, this does seem like a pretty late game. It's pretty it's pretty cool looking. I think if I were gonna play any baseball game, it'd probably be this one. Go get the ball. Where are you? I don't even know where anybody is to get the ball. Nobody's running to it. Okay, go. They got a lot of got a lot of runs on me. <laughs> hey mommy Kali. Oops. Oh. Hold on a second here. Hey, Bright Burns. This used to be the donor cart in NES reproduction site needed to make an earthbound beginnings on the NES. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> Did it alive your cracker jacks are coming back with me. This game is no blades of steel. <laughs> yeah, they have those. They don't have the the nice prizes anymore, zombie. Yeah. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing well tonight. Oops. Ooh. I mean, in truth, it seems like they're just advancing on their own, right? Without uh, me doing anything. Yeah, 
And Grady states them all, which is why I make cameos in this and Blades. Oh, is Grady's in this one too? Well, yeah, there's that. Like, he's just running for the base without me doing anything. Anyone got any suggestions for easy games for Switch? I've got Fairy Tail, which I'm playing now, but want something easy, relaxing. Whoops. Don't get hit much or beaten in fights. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks, zombie. Haven't gotten any fights yet. Home runs seem to be not that hard to get in this game. Oh, Kirby, that's a good point, Richard. That's a good get that's a good recommendation. I mean, any of the Pokemon games are pretty chill, I think. Um, although I guess they can get kind of intense. Well, I don't know why I swung for that. Kirby, Kirby games are generally very easy. It's just trying to see where things are on the field is pretty challenging in this. Oops, oh crap. Hmm, okay. Mario Odyssey? I mean, Mario Odyssey has challenging sections, but it's not all that hard, I guess. Imagine this game mashed up with Smash TV, like robots playing baseball, and meanwhile there's someone slaughtering the players for money and they need to avoid the gunfire. <laughs> hey, uh, Icarus801, how are you? I'm doing well. Just playing a little, uh, little NES this week. How are you doing? Um... Hey, BFG! Did I miss a 7 hand stretch? <laughs> Love this game growing up. My friend and I would have some serious battles in this game. This one, and there's one somewhat similar on the SNES my friend and I would play a lot. Isn't there like a Bill... Is it Bill Lambeer's Cyberball or something? They have given up on trying to remix sports games. It's really only older games trying to be Mecha Baseball. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think uh, doing these, these weird reimaginings... Everything's all like hyper realistic now. Let's like make it look like you're wa watching an actual baseball game on TV. I think this is a really neat. For somebody who isn't really into into sports games, I think this is ideal. Combat basketball, right? Is that on the SNES? 
Super Baseball 2020 had real people both Bionics added. That's interesting. Captain Algebra just played through the new Kirby and seemed to like it. Um, you know, I, 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 I collect all the Kirby games, or as many of them as I can get, um, and I enjoy them when I'm playing them, but I hardly ever look to good, look to them first because I do think I want a little bit more challenge. And yet, whenever I do play them, they I find that they're a little bit more challenging than I expected. Like I recently played the first um, Kirby game for the uh, Game Boy. I'd never really played it before, and it gets a little bit a little bit challenging towards the end there. Um, and then there's just like a hard mode for it too, which I imagine would make it even more of a challenge. Scotland is pretty cool. I mean, it looks great, so... What am I doing? Oof, why am I doing that? Yeah, the music is pretty, pretty swell in this. Repair pairs well with Bailey's hot cocoa. <laughs> it's good to know. Ooh. Wow, totally with that one. to see me bot fight so i have to have two bots on the same like at the um at a base or something right i don't know how to trigger that playing the nes game again world 7 was like okay this looks pretty but i could just fly over everything so it's the point well then you were playing your wrong ldn Where's my character? I don't I don't know. I'm also not sure why they're not advancing on the on the on the uh, on the runs, but uh, I don't know where my guy is okay. Might get epic yarn on 3DS whenever we get a new SD card. Isn't that one on yeah, I don't know what was going on there, Chris. Um it's an epic yarn on the Wii U as well, pretty sure. Or is that on? I think so. I thought it was on Switch on uh, the Wii U. I thought the 3DS version was just like a a portable version of the uh, of the Wii U version. The Wii? Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense then. Thank you guys. But it's the same game, isn't it? So then I'd probably... Uh, I've, I've got it. 
I picked it up. I picked up some of these things also because I thought the Spud might enjoy playing them. cinematic for home yeah it's pretty pretty neat poor Wii U had great games but failed pretty hard your Wii U failed beyond NES I played a bit of the SNES games and briefly played the N64 one but not enough to form an opinion Grab the... Oh, somebody go get the ball. You, you get the ball. Right, whatever. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they're doing really well. <clears throat> This is almost as good as Mega Dan playing Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> he actually knows what he's doing, though. You brought the Ga you brought the Gatsby NES game to class. We we're talking about adaptations of time perfectly. Oh, very cool. How do people like it? That's really cool, Richard. I think no matter how many games they port over to Switch, Wii U will always at least be the best Wii and the best way to play DS games on your TV. Games like this, that arcade style sports games, are my favorite. <clears throat> What? Oh, wow, I'm really bad at this. Maybe stop swinging at those. What? How do I f t start a fight? Can I start a fight? How do I start a fight? Easy. <laughs> Try stealing a base. Start a fight, you have to run into each other on the baseline. Okay. Um, the prof was blown with how pretty that, that NES game was. Oh, very nice. Excellent, Richard. You should post that paper if you can. As soon as the player runs for a base, as that baseman gets the ball, they fight for possession. Okay.
What, there, what? Why did you throw that there? There's nobody over there. Go get it. Why isn't that robot advancing? What the? How do I even get somebody over there? Like, how do I see where my characters are? Oh, there's somebody. Okay. Good grief. No umpires to decide if you're safe or not. You battle to decide. The robots run on Windows Vista. Oh, you got the OG Super Mario Brothers movie from Netflix DVD. That's cool. I kind of miss getting those DVDs in the mail. And they always like it was a little bit more pressure than just like having a big, you know, queue. Somebody get the ball. Anyone? Oh my gosh. Ow. for a base. Ow. I lost. Okay. <laughs> that didn't go well. Now I know how to do the... Okay, so yeah, I have to advance. Okay. That didn't go well at all. CP is doing some odd pitches than it, odder pitches than it normally does. Somebody grab that. How do I get... How do I... No, okay. Come on. 
You have a great little community. Oh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I enjoy that. Glad Bushida shared you out. Yeah, me too. And thank you for joining us, being becoming part of that community. I hope. It's pretty cool. Victory Leo. Hello, sir. Welcome. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to this every week. Not this game in particular, but uh, whatever game happens to be up on, on the uh, schedule. And next week will be Battle Tank, which uh, I know is kind of kind of rough, but looked interesting. Uh, so, so I picked it up not too long ago. Pennant Mode adds more features. Everyone starts with the same equipment, but you can buy new parts for your players after each game. Cannons to pitch faster, shoulders to hit harder, engines to run. Okay. That's neat. I'm trying to decide if, if we want to do a pennant mode after this or just switch to something else for a little bit. I mean, in truth, we have a good sense of the game. Wish during the home run scene and more and more ships from the Great Salamander series. <laughs> they need to do something to diversify that home run thing a little bit. Yeah, me too, Icarus. Me too. This is uh, my favorite part of, of all this. And I'm very, I, I, I am very lucky that uh, my streams are so, so chill. I don't know why I swung for that. Oh crap, what? He's got a gun! Oh, that's no fair. Okay. I should I should not have gone into a fight with that that robot that has a gun. I don't know how I'm supposed to fight with a sword. Sword versus a gun. I'm gonna have to play it a little bit safer though. Because I don't want to lose another robot, right? Though I'm probably gonna lose I'm gonna lose this game anyway. I feel like this is the kind of game that I would kinda of need to immerse myself in for a while to really really get a sense of, of how to play it. with a robot that has a gun. <laughs> How about that Catholicism? Oh, you have to do all upgrading. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Dude had a gun playing baseball. Wow, wow rude. Would be a good cutscene to include a Cylon base star. Yes. Oh, thank you, Chum Nasty. I appreciate that. For sure. You didn't go for it. Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it.
Hmm. Exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> well, sometimes the trolls do arrive, and I shouldn't have even uttered the word troll because now they might they might appear. But uh, overall, it's pretty low key. Cybermen Stadium Series. If you do go pennant mode, the highest grade cannon for your pitcher is the best upgrade money can buy in this game. Cool. So you finished this game, Jim? So does that mean this game takes place in, like, the Gradius universe? Ugh. Radius Cinematic Universe. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chris James T. How are you? Set it to a single game for each matchup. Defaults to best of five. Hmm. This is my first time playing this game. Yeah, Icarus. Um, the Wednesday night streams are always the first time I'm playing the game. Um, for the most part. There's some there's some ex ex um, exceptions. Games that I might have played a few minutes of a long time ago and then never, never figured out or stuck with. But for the most part, these are all like first plays. These are games that I have in my collection that I just never played. They've got quite a lead uh, ahead of me. So you're doing Battle Tank next? S SNK game? Mm, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> Unless you really want to sit through 125 games to see the credits. No. But I know, I guess that's why the game has a battery on it. I guess you can save your game. Thank you. 
Even 25 games to see congratulations. It's not worth it. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody could have caught that if I knew how to control them. Ugh. Oh, good night, Richard. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> Makes sense. Take care, okay? That ball was nowhere near that guy when he swung at it. How did he hit it? I mean, they're going to win by quite a large margin here. So what do you guys 
playing these days. Cap is still playing Twilight Princess. Hector just got a whole bunch of cool, cool games to play. Eldiner is playing some C64 games. Oh, and you guys should all check out Eldiner's uh, C64 video at some point. He did a review of every game on the C64 Maxi, which is the same as the games that are on the Mini. Um, feel free to drop your link in the chat, Eldiner. I contributed uh, footage for a couple of games, which was kind of fun. I need to play some more C64 games at some point. More PC Engine. You've been playing more PC Engine? Cool. Yeah, and Dyer51's been posting some really cool playthroughs on his channel lately, which I have yet to check out. It's been kind of a busy week. Oh, you're adopting a dog, Chris James? Congratulations. Could be a bit of work, but they can be so much fun. What kind of dog are you adopting or you haven't picked, it, picked them out yet? Yeah, Chris says you just finished up Breath of the Wild first playthrough playing uh, DS3, Neo 2, and the game I played that's not single player Smite. Oh, neat. I've heard good things about that. Playing Mario Odyssey and Tomodachi Life right now. I really was interested in Tomodachi Life, and then I heard that they didn't really give you as many choices as you would normally, as you would maybe like in a game, and so I ended up not getting Tomodachi. German Shepherd. Oh, that's really awesome, Chris. We had a German Shepherd mix, um, so she was very small, and uh, she was pretty much the sweetest dog we've ever had. And we've only really owned two dogs, but my wife has had lots of dogs as you know, growing up, and uh, she was very low maintenance, low key, very chill, very loving. And we only had two years with her, um, but uh, they were a great two years. And I miss her every day. She's she was great. She's like my platonic ideal of a dog. I think is how I, I used to say it. Cool. Yeah, check out Aldiner. He's got some some good reviews up there. I liked his I liked his uh, um, commentary, like his um, his overviews of the C64 games and um, kind of his reactions to them. I'm still working my way slowly through the video. It's a very long video. It's like 64 games on it. <laughs> For a minute there, Eldino, I thought you were trying to claim my channel. I'm like, this is my channel. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I put like five years into this channel. This is my channel. <clears throat> These guys never want to fight me. Never loved something more than my dog I have now. I protect that dog with my life. She's my everything. Oh, that they and they are very loyal too. My dog. Um, we have a deaf Australian Shepherd uh, who who is also seemingly going losing his his sight. He can be a real handful sometimes, but he is such a loving dog. He just really wants to be around you all the time and. Uh, Forty-two. Fourteen to forty-two. Alright, we're almost done here. Right. 
See, that ball was nowhere near me, but somehow I hit it anyway. Miss the old pit I had, my ex's dog. That poor dog took so much abuse from these kids. Oh, uh, pits are really, really sweet dogs. <laughs> Name the dog Captain. Skip to the West Bank review, if nothing else. Okay, the point where I just started giving up on taking the video seriously and made a giant. Oh, man, seriously? <laughs> after I've been recommending your video and everything, you're telling me that you, you just kind of checked out after a while? Guess I need to start watching the whole thing before I start recommending things. What? Oh. Almost over. Wait, hold on a second here. Proof of uh, proof of what? Finishing the game. I'll check it out, Jim. Wait, that says it. That's the end. Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't know about doing a full. Doing a full thing. Let me let me see here. I'm gonna set up a poll. Um, can I do more things in a poll? Can I make... Hmm. So, can the poll only be like yes or no? I thought I could ask like multiple things here. Hmm. Like, why can't I do more options? I want to put like a whole bunch of choices in there. Right, well, we'll just see what happens. Pizza as long as it's pepperoni sausage. That sounds okay. Not sure what other video you want to do next. Pineapple's good on pizza, if you're having the right kind of pizza. Is this pull even working? A chihuahua. Oh, so you can do continue, so that's, that's what that battery's for, I guess.
<laughs> Looking at the pole here. I don't even know how many people are in the chat, so... Seems like people want to say no. So then what do we play if we don't play this? Because I, I could probably play for another hour or so. Um, possibly longer. I've got... We could go back to Willow. We could play some more Willow. Um, it's been a little while since we played Willow. Um, I've got... Barbie is still over here, if you want to play more Barbie. See, I wanted to put a bunch of different games in the poll, and I couldn't figure out how to do more than a yes or no poll. Um, but I've got other stuff. I could play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1, or Challenger, or a bunch of Famicom games. World Class Track Meet? Uh, probably not, because that takes a little bit of, uh, of uh, setup. Captain Algebra thinks I should beat Barbie. I've got Xanak over here. I've got all sorts of stuff. So, I don't know what y'all want to see. Um, I don't mind playing more Barbie. We could easily we could easily do that. Let's see if I can even beat it. Challenger is a Famicom game. Um, that is... Uh, hmm. How do I describe it? Kind of cryptic. I guess I haven't really I haven't been able to, to, to clear one one loop of it at all yet. Um, I've gotten close. I think I got to the last area where I had to like save the princess, but um, haven't beaten it yet. Dyrus is Famicom games. I should play some Famicom games. Uh, let me see what options I've got over here. Hold on one second here. Challenge. I do like Challenger. That's why it's still over here because it's it's a game I'm, I've been kind of poking at. I mean, I really do have play no death run Barbie. If I die, just chuck the cartridge. <laughs> Favorite teams are the ones with games I've never heard of. All right, let me see. What do I have? Uh, Famicom wise here. I have Tower of Drago over here. I've got Star Wars, Schoon, Atlantis No Nazo, um, Galg. I think is over here. Loop in the Third and um, Hello Kitty World. Those are the only ones I have here. The other ones are all downstairs. Barbie, no death when you die in the game, you die in real life. Try adding a team using the name Terminators. Does that do something funny? Um, and then some of the other ones, some of these, like, I've got Xanak here still, Zen Intergalactic Ninja, which I still haven't finished. 3D World Runners is still out. TMNT, Willow, Wizards and Warriors, Castlevania. These are just, like, some of the games that I have, like, nearby because I'm kind of nominally, like, working on them or thinking about working on them at some point. Battle Kid 2. Nightmare on Elm Street, Starkeeper, Legendary Wings, Jackal, Tombs and Treasure, Time Lord, Super C, which I still need to finish, TMNT2, POW, Roller Games, Russian Attack, oh, Adventure Island 2, which I do want to, I do want to finish, Superman, actually I'm probably going to do a special stream for that, Narc, Spelunker, Tailspin, I still need to finish Tailspin. Bunch of homebrew games in it. Uh, little Medusa, I just got Gold Guardian Gun Girl, kind of a nice little mainstay. Uh, Bass Death, which I need to finish. Eskimo Bob, Heredia Zero, Haunted Halloween '86, Jim Power, <laughs> Holy Diver, excellent. Mario's Missing, which I want to do a stream for that for Mr. Matthews. Mahani and Tales, Project Blue, Spookatron, Swords and Runes. Stanley, Search for Dr. Livingston, Search Moons 3, Mall Brawl, Punch Out. Yeah, Draga is a good cryptic one to play. That's true. It's, have people, have you guys seen Draga before? If you guys haven't seen Tower of Draga, I, I would, I would happily play some Tower of Draga. I think that's a good suggestion, Dire 51. Why don't we try some um, Tower of Draga? Do you know, have you played very far in Tower of Draga? Um, 
Yeah, unless anybody feels super strong. We can also do some Barbie, like, after this, if you want. If you all want. I also have um, more Astro, I have Astro Boy, so we can do more Astro Boy, and I've got Star Luster in here right now, which I've been also playing a little bit of. Do you no know Death Run of Holy Diver? Oh my God! I uh, I wish I've only gotten to stage like four of, of Holy Diver, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, this is a cryptic game, but I'm I'm kind of compelled by it. Tower Draga is super underrated, huge in Japan, super influential, never got any sequels as far as I know. There are other games that are kind of in the same universe as Tower Draga, and I think there was some like there was a kind of a remake or, or or a sequel to it. Um Legend of Kai, the Quest of Key was the prequel, Return of Ishtar was the sequel. Yeah, Dire 51 is all about them. Um, okay. Apparently there's a sort of spinoff in the new Mr. Driller game for Switch. Oh, really? All right, we'll see how far we get in this thing. I don't know, I don't know a heck of a lot about, about how to play this. Um... But I keep buying it. Like, I have a bunch of the Namco collections that have Tower of Draga on them, including the arcade game. There's an arcade... This is an arcade game that was ported to the uh, to the NES. So here, in another time, in another world, the blue crystal rod kept the kingdom in peace, but the evil demon Draga hid the rod and the maiden key in a tower. The Prince Gilgamesh wore golden armor and attacked monsters to save Key in the Tower of Draga. It's kind of a cool, cool title sequence there. I like the music. All right, so in order to, you have to hold A or B in order to, to use your sword, and you have to hold the sword out in order to kill these things. And I failed. I don't know, I'm not sure what just happened there. What the heck was that? Was the sword not, was the sword not out? There it is. You also have to kind of attack them the right way. And uh, each stage has like a hidden item. And uh, you need to, f often you need to collect things to progress. I, I believe at some point there's an item that if you don't have it, you like you just cannot beat the game. So there, I've just like made a tre chest open up here. If I go see what's in there. I forget if the key's like always in the same place or not. It's very slow, but you can- Oh, there's the key. So I have to go get that key as well. But this is an item. It's like a pickaxe? I'm not sure what that does. I'm 
sure it's useful. At some point. Hard to tell when your sword is actually deployed. And if you attack the enemies at the wrong time, like when they're about to move, then they will actually still hurt you. Okay, so I've got the key now, and now I can go through that door. My time is running out. Now, if you die, I believe you start over from the beginning, but you keep your items. You keep everything you've collected up to that point. Yeah, you have to hold down the A button. But it's kind of annoying to have to hold down the button. There was a remake of Draga, right, for the PC Engine, with much nicer graphics and some quality of life improvements. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, even when the sword is out, sometimes you can't kill these things because of the, the timing of the enemies. It's also the B button, A or B, keeps the sword out. And I think everything is like... So I got... Is that boots? I got boots so I can walk faster now. I believe that everything is randomized. Like when you play. I think the layout and the enemies are like randomized. So it's kind of like a roguelike in some ways. Or roguelite. this guy. Oh, okay. How do I... Hmm. I'm not sure how I attack him. He's got a sword, too. Rush for all of them running on the PS Classic. Do I have Return of Nishtar in Namco Museum Volume 4? I'm not sure. They do work on the PS Classic. I kind of like Narc Eldina, but that's because I played it as a kid. I never got very far. I know I played it two-player with a friend of mine, which is why I didn't I didn't stream it as at Alpha Numeric because I did play a fair bit of it as a kid. But uh, I think I have to avoid that guy because I can't really do anything with him yet. Um, but I want to beat Narc. That's on one of my childhood rematch lists of games that I never finished as a kid that I'd like to. I think I have to avoid that. He's got a shield and everything, right? So I kind of got to avoid him. Oh boy. Okay. This is dangerous. Is there an item? Do you have an item somewhere? Anybody holding an item? Is it in these guys? Because I don't know how to attack these guys. Huh. Am I supposed to like run through them and then attack them from behind? Aha, okay. I'm not sure what that is. Some sort of potion? Mame is such a hassle to get working. Yeah. I've never had good luck with Mame. I'm not sure if I have Namco Museum Volume 4 on the PS Classic, but it's easy enough to, to get it in there. Whoopsie. Whoa! Okay, I've never been to this stage, I think. I don't know about these wizards. These, uh, these whiz robes. Ugh, I had the sword out, but I didn't deploy. So I should be able to continue, right? But do I continue from the st first stage? I think so. Yeah. But I should have my item still. I think. Yes. Legend of Valkyrie. I have the Valkyrie game on um, Famicom. But yeah, I need to... I think I installed one of those things just to have um, 
Boscovian, which is not typically... Why? Which has not been reissued very often, but I really like Boscovian. Once a PS is mod, it should be a matter of downloading the ROM. Yeah, and just like loading it up on the... Uh... Wait, where did this, the key go? Like, I can just add them onto a thumb drive, and it's easy enough. Of course, the, uh, the Mr. Core should be working, pre is working pretty, pretty, pretty well now. Um, it should be public soon. Bosconian, that's right, not Bosconian. Bosconian. So it should be easy enough to, to add games in whenever I want. There are a lot of games. Nope. Oh. <coughs> that was kind of a, a bummer. So how many floors have you gotten into this uh, uh, dire? Which Mr. Core? Jim, the uh, PS1. Oh. Do I have a shield? Can I block that? I have to see. And does the shield work if the sword is deployed or not? I'm guessing no. Oh, the shield goes up too, so you have to hold it up. Right, let me see if I can work, if I can block the uh, the wizard. Nope. How do I block that thing? PS1 close to going public. It's pretty close. It's still in uh, beta, but it's it's really really good. From what I hear, I haven't done any of the beta. Um, I haven't done any of the betas because I figured I've just been waiting for it to go public. Even though I, I I'm doing the Patreon, so I can have access to the um, to the beta core. Um, actually, it might be public. I'm not even sure. Um, I just figured I'll wait because I have plenty of other games to play. But uh, apparently, it's very good. They're just kind of refining it. Made up to 17 or 18 ones. Hmm. There's something I'm missing about, uh, about the combat here. It's just got to be a matter of the timing, like not attacking them when they're moving. Like that. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to go public. I picked up the cruising game on sale recently, Eldiner. Um, like physical, the physical copy of it. Oh. Like cruising blast or whatever. It was like 20 bucks or, or less, I think. I have no idea. I, I just heard it was good, so I picked it up. There's an Encore that was Japan only? I didn't know about that one, Dire. Yeah, it certainly seems to be random every time you, you load it up. Hmm. It's not the right way over here. It's so gonna go this way. Cruising Blast is really fun. The only problem is they recycle the tracks a lot, do they? I guess I wouldn't mind that much. I mean, I would play a lot of NES games that, that recycle tracks too, right? <laughs> recycle uh, assets a lot. So even though I should play probably the arcade version of this instead, uh, which I have access to, I kind of just like the fact that the NES game takes up like the full screen. There's also a Game Boy version of this, I believe. Uh, we'll do Eldiner. 
Encore is unusual in that there's not a single Pac-Man game on it. Huh. Still don't know what that is. I really like how um, games like this were played in Japan, though, in the arcades. Like, they had to, um, they had, like, notebooks, I think, where, where gamers could leave notes, of stuff that they found, like clues for the game, and, and so it became a very communal sort of uh, pro process. So I think I just have to avoid the, the wizard somehow. Ugh. Is there something I'm doing wrong with the wizard dire? Is there some way to block the, uh, the shots? I guess I just have to get out of their way. Uh, hmm. Oh. Look at Mario Kart DLC. Even Nintendo's basically recycling assets. Well, I mean, all those reissues that they've been doing for their games, too. I mean, it's not quite the same thing, but. It's close. Still need to find something to. to kill. There's probably an item in here. Oh, nuts. Stay still and not have your sword out. What? Huh. Oh, that has Wonder Momo on it? Oh, that's interesting. I think I might have... I wonder if I have that one installed, because I know I wanted Dragon Saber. Wonder Momo was just reissued. I played a little bit of the arcade version of that the other day on my... Um, on my At Games. So if you don't move, it doesn't show... Okay. I mean, you gotta move. sword is drawn, your shield isn't up. Okay. So if the shield is up, then... I was trying to figure it out based on, like, the animation. So if you look at... If you look at the sprite... Like, it kind of looks like... It, I guess the shield is up. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so if, if the shield... So I should be able to lock it with the shield down, I guess? The shield out? We'll try that. Hmm. First found this game on Namco Museum DS. Yeah, that's right. I think I have that version of it, too. Part of the reason I, I picked this up, even though I have other versions of this, this is on the Namco um, Museum... Oh... Uh, I like the uh, cartridge art, actually. I like the the melding of the sprite work with the uh, cartoons. Deflect the magic blast. You can't be mu moving if the blast is heading toward you. Okay. So when you're moving, the shield is also... Well, the shield is... But you can't be moving if the blast is heading toward you. Okay. Chiptune version of the song is really charming. Yeah, I like it, too. Yeah, they should have put this on the Switch Online. It's definitely in the Namco collections, which you can get for pretty cheap. I think I got... I have, um... I have the the physical version of the Japanese release of the Namco collection. Um, and then I also picked up the, the North American releases of them. Because they were like $5 each, like on sale. So 
So if I'm not moving, but my shield is out and the thing comes towards me, does it die? Yes. Okay, so if they're coming towards me, I need to stop moving. I can't move towards them at the same time that they're moving towards me. So that's good to know. But I can just kind of keep this out and have them like kind of run into me if they want. If they want. Of course, then you're like wasting time. But if they're coming close, you should just stand still. Like that. Okay. Alright, we're figuring this out. Thanks for the tip there, Dyer. Did they release a Namco Museum for Switch? Yeah, they, they released a Namco Museum, and then this is like the Namco Museum Archives, which is a little different. PC Engine remakes on your short list of games to pick up. Oh, I was like, what is that weird creature? It's, it looked like some kind of weird jellyfish thing. But it just it was the monster with like the, the key under it. Okay. I lost one of my items that I had. I wonder where that pickaxe went away to. I'm not sure how to use the pickaxe, or, or do you use it to like break through a wall or something, I think? I might have used it at some point by accident. Oh, there's a chest over there. How did that chest appear? No, 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 no. Okay, I don't want to... That's tricky, because I want to get to that chest. Let's see if there's another way around. No, there isn't. That's kind of a bummer. Okay, the sword was definitely out. Not sure how I missed it. I have Namco Museum on Switch 1 with Pac-Man Versus. Alright, why don't we make another run of this, and then I'll play around with Barbie, just to see how we do. I really do like this game, I just need to uh, play more of it. That's why, one of the reasons why it's near my NES, in case I have like time for a quick session. So probably I need to collect items again. I wonder if you can collect multiples of items. Since it's clearly perishable. So how does this thing work? Do I... How do I break... Do I use it to break something? I have no idea how to use that item. I think about a lot of the games were just obscure on the first Naoko Museum. Yeah, for sure. Give them a try. You could stream them. Goodness, I have those boots. Pad Pac-Man versus in college on GameCube. Oh, that was super fun. Did you play with folks who had Game Game Boys? So that was a cool multiplayer experience. Yeah, that's right, Dire Fifty One. And I, I downloaded those ROMs and bought the collection because I, I felt bad about downloading the ROMs. Um, but they do, in fact, play on your NES. And they're very good. can't get to him because I'll open that that door. Alright. Redownloading the first Namco Museum Switch game. Awesome. 
Yeah, it's Fire Horses on there. That's true. I played a little bit of the arcade game after beating the, play the Turbo S Turbo Graphics uh, 16 version of it. And I really liked it. I guess I shouldn't collect that key until I'm ready for it, huh? So it's a little different, though. The arcade version is a little different. It feels the same, but some of the strats are a little bit different. Alright, I collected the thing, whatever that is. I guess I'll get out of here. I assume there's only one item per level. Okay, I was going to ask, what do you guys use to capture HD footage? Looking for something that's not too crazy expensive, but ideally not a pain to get working. So, oh hey, Anish Rocks, how are you doing? Yeah, the best thing about staying up late, right? Um, for HD capture, I use... So I use... Um, well, like right now, I mean, technically I've got 480p HD on this, but I use... Uh, when I have two capture cards. I have an Avermedia... And I have the um, Hopog PVR Rocket, and the PVR Rocket I can record directly to the uh, to a, an SD card on there. But if if either capture card, I can just I just out um, output them to OBS, and then I can use OBS to record them as well. Oh yeah, that was cool. Guy Plus is cool. I think I saw saw that card you posted of it, Dyer. Yeah, I don't have Galaxian for Famicom. Oh, you have a Famicom Gap Plus. That's interesting. I don't have a Famicom. I don't have Galaxian, but I should probably grab it because it's probably cheap. And Galaga, I have it on the NES, so I don't have the uh, Famicom version. Gap Plus is great. Gap Plus is basically like Galaga 3. Um, it's terrific. I played it for the first time at MAGFest in the arcade and um, fell in love with it because it's... It was so surprising. I was playing it for the first time, and uh, when you play it... Oh, okay, so that does block them. That's good. Um, when you play it, the... Uh, your ship can capture other... can capture aliens and add them to, to the ship. Oops, I was facing the wrong way. So I was, I was like really, really blown away the first time I did that. Appeared just by walking over it. Okay, I don't know what that is. So that's interesting to know that it doesn't have to just be, you don't have to just kill something, sometimes it's just like walking over something. It's American Port of Galaga on NES. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, NES games, actually. I really like that version of Galaga. I play it more than the arcade game. Arcade Gap Plus is on PS1 Namco Museum Volume 2. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of these wizard guys. There's too many of them. What the heck? Ugh. That's a lot of wizards. Wow. 
well. No, not an NES exclusive. This is a tough, tough stage. All right, I'm gonna switch over to Barbie. We'll play one round of Barbie. What do you think? What do you think of that? One round of Barbie and then we'll call it a night. Did anyone ever actually like Mappy? They released it on everything. I was really aggressively didn't like it. My son really likes Mappy. He played a lot of it um, on my arcade thing. I do like Mappy Land, though. All right, we'll see how we do here. I like Mappy, but uh, I haven't gotten very far in it. I think I've only gotten, like, stage 12 or something like that. <clears throat> All right, let's see if I remember how to play this. All right, okay. Never played to check out Galga 88. I played a little bit of Galga 88, but yeah, I definitely would like to play more of it. I suppose they're like hidden things. How do I box that? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do there. I should figure that out at some point. Ah, uh, these sluggish controls. I did look up the alternate music for this game, and that's that's pretty wild. Final Galaga related note, check out Cosmo Gang, the video for Super Famicom. Huh, I didn't know about that one actually. Cosmo Gang, the video. Uh, do I have a Game Genie? Would I use a small fixed code for these streaming series or do you stick to unaltered? Generally I stick to unaltered in NES Rocks. Um, sometimes I'll use a code, like especially if it was like Nintendo Power. Um, 
I think the only time I used the Game Genie code was when we were intentionally trying to make, like, add all the uh, Hammer Brother enemies to Super Mario Brothers. Um, but yeah, I generally don't use it Game Genie stuff. I, try, I do try to beat games 100% legit for the most part. Um, I'm not beyond using codes, especially for practice, and then maybe trying to do, like, a full clean run if I if I really like the game and care about it um, but yeah I don't, I don't tend to tend to cheat and occasionally I'll use a save state if the game really really warrants it but uh, yeah the uh, that Space Invaders port though Aldina was Famicom only I thought Some more Z's. And I do own a Game Genie, but um, it's like in a box somewhere. And it's just, I've just had it since I was a kid. Hmm. We're playing on uh, original hardware tonight, but sometimes I, I play on the ABS. Alright, that's good. I've got some bonus things in here. So those bonus rooms are really helpful, because that really helped me uh, build up my health. I picked up... Uh, picked up the uh, Famicom version of the game because it's cheap and I actually like Space Invaders. I didn't realize it wasn't a good port of it though. I mean, Space Invaders, like how do you mess up spa Space Invaders, right? It's near identical to the arcade game. That's funny. I didn't think it was a bad port of it. Maybe, uh, maybe Space Invaders isn't that good. This music reminds me of another game, and I'm not sure what it is. So I think where I screwed up last time was there's like a section here where I just rushed through instead of trying to figure out the timing. And you really just need to take your time. Let's just see where, where things are going to show up. So I can stand here. I just need to take my time through here, I think. Especially when there's like the freaking fish coming out. Hold on. Music engine sounds like NES Simpsons to me. It does sound a little bit of, of it. Drog is on the first museum for Switch. Yeah, it's in the um it's the arcade version of it though, but it's it's I actually don't know how the arcade version compares to the NES version or the Famicom version, Dyer. Do you? It's basically the same game except for the graphics, right? Yeah, I think some of the same people worked on this game, NES Rocks. Um, this is from Imagineering, and I think they did some stuff. Um, did Imagineering make the Simpsons game, and then and then Acclaim just released it? Yeah, like Jim said, he believes it's the same dev. I can stay, oops, stand in between the fountains and I'm safe. Aha. Oh, that's a bad place to stand. Okay, bad, bad idea. Alright, this is where I need to kind of keep an eye on where things are, are going. Thank you. 
Alright, well, I think that went better. Oops, no. Just want to see if there's anything over here. Guess not. Uh, Mark Van Heck worked on the sound for Space Mutants in this game. Oh, interesting. Cool. Joe Hawker had a really good port. Let me see here. Yeah, aside from the graphics, Famicom Drago is pretty close to the arcade. Awesome. Honestly, you know, it's just me being a Nintendo fanboy, like an NES fanboy, or just the aesthetic that I grew up with. A lot of the time, I prefer the NES uh, um pixel art compared to uh, arcade game stuff. So I'd rather play the NES version of, of an arcade game if it's like a good game. I don't recall hearing music in Space Invaders Arcade. Hard to avoid the fish. Yeah, I think that uh, I was I did make better progress on this one. I didn't take as many as many uh, dumb hits. But I think also like the iframes if you can. But um, it's a good hit idea. Same thing with the french fries, yeah. The fact that you can't duck makes it a little bit trickier. It's like right in the middle of her. It's just really simple to say it's music, like the Jaws theme. Well, I mean, there's more to the Jaws theme than just that one refrain. I mean, just like Psycho, it's just like the whole. That's not the whole soundtrack of Psycho. Like this whole, that whole theme is just like. Nah, 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 nah. supposed to last. And it's slowing down. And almost gone, and it's gone. Pizza! things while you're moving. Ouch. Yeah. 
Alright, that wasn't terrible. Pilla. One thing the NES port had that the arcade did in color. <laughs> Space Invaders is certainly one of the simplest games on the system. I picked up the cartridge um, in one of my recent batches of Famicom games. I have to, haven't tried it yet. I should play it. Can I just skip this? No. No. Time to go to the beach. Underwater stuff here. Let's see if I remember how to do this. What? sure what the dolphin really does for me. Seahorse. Going this way. Should have gotten that bubble, but. That or Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah. Some of the new games that have come out are pretty cool. Just gonna go 
this way, I guess. I'm not entirely sure what points are for. Music in here is kind of kind of a mood. This still look dangerous to me, but Princess Rescue in 128 bites. <laughs> yeah, Mermaid Sage is a good one for Z's. As it happens. it around like that. So far so good, zombie. Death run is intact <laughs> so far. <laughs> Though we're, I am just trying to beat the game. How you doing? How's the new job working out? You said you were you were traveling now. I saw they're gonna do a. There's a Kickstarter coming soon for a an NES port of Montezuma's Revenge, which has never been done before. I'm kind of intrigued by that. All right, here we go. get one of those creatures to come over here. Right? Alright, you gotta come over here. We'll come back. I think it's just a straight port. Come over here. Yeah, I haven't played much of Montezuma's Revenge Dire, but I'd sooner play an NES port of it.
It's an excellent master system port you might want to check out too. Okay. Yeah, the audio system does take up a lot of space. Oh, by the way, f uh, folks who've been watching me play Battle Kid 2 lately, um, oops, <clears throat> which I do hope to get back to uh, soon, uh, Battle Kid is being ported to the Xbox One. Um, and it will also be available as a ROM. Um, so, if you're at all curious about um, Battle Kid and want to play that game, then uh, check it out. I think you can pre-order it as of like the 9th or something like that. On the 2600 port, which is really well done. I know the boss at the end of the stage gives me some trouble sometimes, but overall the run is going better than I expected. Euro platformers like the C64, Money on the Run, Jumpman, yeah. Money on the Run seems very interesting. I played a little bit of it, and I kind of want to try it, try out more of it. Are you coming over here? Game's hard, yeah. Not surprised. It's a really good sound effect for the popcorn popping. Spitting out like a tomato or something. Money on the Run has a really good soundtrack. Go, Barbie, go! Your system runs too fast. You can adjust the uh, speed, I thought.
Now, I'm pretty sure I can make this thing come over here. So I can grab that record. I wonder if it's going to give me some Z's or something. Wait, hold on. Come back. Come on. Turn around. Oh. Can't quite reach that. Could be because you have like a European version of it. All right, that was probably worth it. Thank you, little car. does anything to him. I guess I'll just leave that one. Oh, thanks, Annie Ashrox. I really appreciate you coming by and hanging out so long. And if I don't see you again, have a good night. Sleep well. So I figured out when I looked at the video of what was going on here that the um, you have to lower it and then have it hit the condiment so that the condiment squirts ketchup into the french fries and then that quiets the french fries, <laughs> which is actually really pretty clever. So I should be able, I should be safe in the middle of those two fro- no I'm not, like right here maybe? Okay, I'm safe here. I should be safe on the other end of this bowl here. And I should just make a run for it. Okay. You wouldn't want to get white, uh, like ketchup on that white, white shirt, Barbie. Where's, where's it safe here? I should be able to get this thing down here if I s something like somebody to help out. How do I get that? Oh, oh come on. I don't know how to move this. That would have been really helpful to get that. Oh, thank you, Yugo. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Stand here. I'm just 
can go. Took a lot of hits there, but I got a Z back. Hey Jameson, from Base Wars back to Barbie, indeed. Hope you're doing well. Just can't resist Barbie, you know? Alright, this is this is the tricky boss that I have. I have to get this one down. That's better. As long as I jump when that shake comes on the screen, I should be okay over here. Oh. Alright, I think we're okay now. Oh, except for that. No! I spoke too soon. wasn't too terrible. Oh, uh, thank you, Dyer51. Have a good night. Get some rest. And we'll go to bed right after the stream. Alright, the no death run is intact. This stage is where I failed last time. I know it's just a matter of like this jumping stuff here. If anybody if you have any tips on this uh Dyer, let me know. Pretty sure I just need to not fall on the thing. Right, I need to not fall on that floor. The platforming is really... Does it hurt me every time I land on that? Or is it just... making me flash? Coin drops do stop after a set number. Oh, do they? Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. So when I land on the floor, that doesn't actually seem to hurt me. It just, it just makes her flash. Right? Okay. I didn't even know what those things were. Just knew something was dropping. There's something weird about the... We should jump. It kind of reminds me of some of those jumps in Wolverine. So if I just wait long enough. Okay, yeah, that looks like a quarter, I guess. stop? This coin does not seem to be stopping. Or maybe these drops drop. Stop. Maybe this one doesn't. Oh, you mean this version? Oh, that one stopped. Oh, hold on. Oh, there's a pause. Oh, come on. There was a break in the notes. Alright, we'll see how we do here. So this one stops? It's been a while. <laughs> That's okay. Oof. I 
This is rough. I said one, two, three, four, five, pause. One, two, three, four, five. What? Oh. Hey, you're not Alexander? <laughs> this is an LJN game. No, it's not. It's an Imagineering game. I can see why you might make that mistake. How are you doing tonight? One, two, three, four, five. Oh boy, okay. I think I remember you being stuck here for a while, Jim. Not stuck per se, but not having a good time. is a trap. <laughs> Not having a good time is definitely accurate. Work slow, so I'm going to hang out here until 2 a.m., then go home. I may not be here until 2 a.m. I don't know what time, what time zone you're in, but I'll be playing for... I'm going to try to beat this game. I don't know. This No Death Run seems doomed because of this stupid stage, but I might be able to pull together a win. Unless there's like some health somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's so cruel. Not nice. Thank goodness you don't take, uh, get hurt. Oh, you're in Vir Virginia. Yeah, so I, I might still be here at 2 a.m., I don't know. It wouldn't be the first time, but probably should not be. Call this part the No Death One Killer and Captain Dan laughed at you? <laughs> I think it is the No Death One Killer, though. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I'm like right here. What? How am I to land on that little note? Certainly your first time through here. This would be one of the few NES games where the coins hurt you. So, okay, can I even land on this thing? Let's see. How are you supposed to land on it? Dang. Jump over the small note. I was wondering about that. Maybe. I mean, I was wondering if that was what the intention is. Like, clearly that little note is, is a little... Like a... A trap, right? I think you like the way that this these jumping things work. You kind of need some momentum. What is this TMNT? <laughs> it's 
is bad. This is worse than the damn level in TMNT. People are like, that damn level is so hard. I remember passing it pretty pretty handily as a kid, so. Even on, oh crap. Even on my stream, the first time playing it in who knows how long, got past it. I want to get back to TMNT, but it's a matter of having the time to sit down and really just play through it. Hi, <laughs> zombie. Yeah, we're at, back at this part. This is where my, my last run ended um, on last Wednesday. I never got past. I never got back up to here. Our no death run is still intact, but I have two Z's left, and uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna get past this very well. Oops. Yeah, I wasted one there. I should have waited. I got impatient. Yeah, I need the momentum, and I need the pixel-perfect jump. But I'm in trouble here. Unless there's some health somewhere that I'm not aware of. Do I have to land on these discs, I guess? Impatience here is the real no death one killer. Yes. So true. Oh good, these move too. I got some Z's. That'd be nice. What the heck? Can I jump on that? So <laughs> that is super super cruel. <sighs> Team anti fame is AVGN's fault. Oh, you're back. Hope you're all cozy. I have lulled many many of you were to sleep on their iPads in bed. <laughs> oh. The small gear looking ones will fall after being jumped on. Okay. Thank you for the warning. That's a good that's a good point. You are not Alexander, let's not credit James Rolf with every piece of NES era lore. Pretty sure when I was a kid that people thought that that damn level was pretty hard even then. Nope, I didn't have enough momentum there. Where I need a P-wing or something. There's a gold disc right at the start, but it's a bit dangerous to go for. Hmm. Nope. Uh, jump too soon. Gold disc right at the start. Is that it? That's the gold disc? I thought it was hitting that. <sighs> Great. It gave me like one. I thought that was part of the attack for some reason. Only the misconceptions are his fault.
It'd be great if that if that gold disc regenerated every time. Or gave me more than one Z. Considering this... The annoyance here. This is extremely frustrating. This is like Barbie's Turbo Tunnel. Mm. Did he ever play this game, AVGN? I wonder what he makes of this masterpiece. I actually kind of like it. It's it's not it's not terrible. Just some cute things. Mega always said he wanted to make a sound clip for my stream of this part. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is pretty terrible. This level is pretty terrible. Oh my god. No pain, no gain. I wonder if gain is due after this. Perhaps if I sell my cartridge, I will gain my money back. <laughs> but I never sell my cartridges. Hardly ever. Oh, did he make a video on this? I just never really watched him. I don't know. It's, I guess, I guess maybe when I was, when he was really popular, I wasn't really on YouTube much. And I never would have looked for videos on NES games because I'm still playing NES games. So it wasn't really like trying to recapture nostalgia for me. Well, obviously, I watch lots of videos on YouTube on, on YouTube on NES games now, but mm. and a friend of mine was really into into his videos and would occasionally send me things like I saw his Superman sixty four video, and I'm actually going to stream that one day because I've never played it. I'm probably going to do a Superman stream of uh, Superman 64, the Superman NES game, and I have recently picked up a um, plug-and-play, I think it's by Majesco, Majesco plug-and-play of, oh, whoops, of uh, Superman games. So you plug them into your TV, you know, and it's like it's a little Superman shield-shaped controller, and uh, some of the games actually look pretty pretty decent. Um, they're all rip-offs of other games. Like, there's one that's like a rip-off of, uh, Space Invaders. There's one that's like a rip-off of Alien- of, uh, not Aliens, of Asteroids. Com combination of AVGN and a documentary on a guy trying to get a full NES set in 30 days that got me into collecting. The, uh, Collector Quest, right? That one even wasn't that good, like that documentary. Um, but it was an interesting, it was an interesting video. 
because it always comes down to that handful of really expensive games. And he ended up just getting a bunch of free ones. You know, people just gave them his game, their games. I do want to check out some of his old, some of his old videos. I know I watched. I'm pretty sure I watched his Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde video. freak out when you get to those gold ones. You just gotta jump the same way. Oh, you need more more momentum on that last one there. Uh, sending it back to the start of the stage. Games could be cruel, but this is this is a bit much. Fails by a pretty fair margin. Months or so after quest, he does make it. To, yeah, that's right. Stadium events. Hey, Omega Ace. Hello, hello. Gotta be the worst dream ever. This is just a level of hell, I'm pretty sure. A circle of hell. Whoops. It is good to see you, Omega Ace. Welcome back. Hope you got some rest today. Do you plan on resuming your streams this Friday, Omega Ace? No pressure, I'm just curious. I'm actually probably not going to be around on Friday night. So, it really is purely out of curiosity. Don't! Oh my gosh. Can I just jump to... nope. Oh, good. Is it Donkey Kong 3 you're still on? Donkey Kong Country 3 you're still on? Of course, we're still hoping for some couple streams with your lovely wife. I think the dev had some grudge against little girls. Oh, cool. The Legends NDR. Nice. Congratulations. Legends premiere Monday, Donkey Kong Country 3 on Friday. You mean this coming Friday or next Friday you're going to come back? Or this coming Friday, Donkey Kong Country 3, and then coming Monday, Legends NDR. I'll have you know that technically the, uh, the Barbie No Death Run is intact at the moment. But we're going to have some trouble here pretty soon. <laughs> it's quiet at work, so just chilling out, max and relaxing, all cool, shooting some b-ball outside of the school until someone makes fun of my wife's dude. Then someone gets sla slapped. <laughs> Cute. This Friday then coming. Oh, sweet. Lots of the mega goodness to look forward to. And I do hope you had a lovely wedding.
I'm getting a tire little tired, guys. <laughs> so hopefully we can wrap this up soon, because I would like to at least finish the game. No death run notwithstanding. Okay, jump on this, jump on that, jump, long jump, long jump, okay. Coins. These are very fast coins. Whoops! That was a bad mistake. Oh, thank you. Okay. Coin return! <laughs> oh my god. Winning was great, awesome, survive this nightmare, and it's the final boss. Really? Alright, what do I do here? Yeah, they thought I was going to get it on my first live attempt, and then I got pretty far, and I, I sort of I sort of failed somewhere. So what's going to happen next? What do I do here? Should I just see what happens? Because <laughs> um, I'm going to die soon. I've got two health left. Hop on the coins to make them spin. Oh, jeez, I think I remember seeing you do that. Okay, I think I remember seeing Jim do that. I'm on the coins to make them spin. Jump on top of the three records to get them spinning. Okay. These things? Oh, crap. Okay. Do they all have to be spinning at the same time? got to spin at their peak for the game to end. Oh no. How do you make them spin faster? Oh, and dead. All right, so much for that. All right, well we're going to finish this game anyway. So you got to spin didn't get the no death run, but what the?
Music cues, I guess, help. Oh, come on. Really? <sighs> no. Pretty, pretty awful level. We did it! Oh my god, that's terrible! Alright, thank you for the tip, guys. That helped a lot. <sighs> At least we finished the game. It seems like a no-death run would be possible. Not too much trouble. At least we finished the game, right? <laughs> Thanks, guys. They wanted girls to go, dislike video games and go back to playing. I mean, now I think I could do a no death run because I know how to get that through the stage and I know how to get through the boss. And if I can up, get up to there with like enough health, it should be easy enough to do it. I don't know if I care enough about the game to try to do no death run, except to like get a t-shirt or whatever, right? Because you guys have t-shirts. Also, hi, Super Jeff, good gamer. I'm sorry I didn't see your entrance. I didn't acknowledge your entrance. I was kind of caught up. Yeah, I agree with you, Jim. This is far from the most game. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's all right. And that's it. That's the end. <laughs> all right. Well, at least we can. Uh, I, yeah, I'd call it call it a decent game. I don't know. I th thought Captain Algebra said there, there were T-shirts. Um, at least we ended on a on a high note, <laughs> so to speak. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It has some cool, um, cool mechanics. Like it's sort of like an interesting, far more interesting than I would have given a Barbie game credit for, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, and I appreciate the tips. That was very helpful to get me through that last stage. But yeah, I think I could do I could do no death run if I if I care enough about it. <laughs> I'll take I'll take a uh, I'll take a clean win though. It's all good. I mean, we should. If there are no T-shirts, we should make T-shirts. Like, I, 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 uh, I did a no death run of Barbie on NES, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Joked about the hatches or letter jackets it would be cool. You know, it would be an interesting, Jim, if there was like merit badges for NES games. Like, you had a sash or something, and you got like a little patch for particular games. Like, you beat Battletoads, you beat. Barbie, you get like a special no death run patch if you do a no death run of them. Um, I don't know, could be interesting. Although, you know, there's already enough emphasis on, on people doing no death runs or, or completing games and whatnot, then, then, uh, then there needs to be. So, whatever. But hey, at least I can beat Barbie, right? <laughs> oh man, I do not want this stream to end because I like hanging out with all of you. Um, but uh, I shall probably go to sleep, I guess. And uh, maybe get up early and get some work done. 
can see the patches getting political. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Oh, Activision did that for being some of their 2600 games. Interesting. I like the idea of... Um, I want to I want to commission, like when I beat a game that is in my personal... Like personal challenges for me. Like when I beat Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES... Um, I like I, I, since I've collected some perlers for these games. I think I think I want to collect perlers for like to represent games that I've beaten that I'm really proud of having beaten. Um, so I would probably be commissioning a perler from Zombie or Nefarious West if he's still doing it for Teenage Ninja Turtles. If I beat T Teenage Ninja Turtles, that kind of thing. <laughs> There's enough measurements of male genitalia going on in this community. That's funny. Um. Yeah, thanks, Zombie. So, yeah, you know, whenever I beat a game, like, so some of the games that are on my list of, of childhood games that I want to beat, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles still, uh, which I'll get back to soon. Wizards and Warriors is one. NARC, Will Diener was talking about NARC earlier. Um, there's certain games that I played as a kid that I never finished that I want to, to go back and finish. Um, like, I finished Nemo, so I got a perler for that. Um, you know, so I'm thinking maybe Yonoid might be one. For instance, yeah, there's just not going to be a rush zombie. It's going to be like whenever I beat the game, I'll be requesting one. <laughs> but I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, anyway, <sighs> well, it's good to finish the game. I feel feel good about that. <laughs> uh, so no stream this weekend. I'm going to stop promising I'll be back on Monday for Battle Kid 2. There's a good chance I will be back, but i am also been trying to finish wrapping up a writing project, and I may I feel guilty streaming excessively when I have these other things hanging over my head. So I will probably try to dispatch that before I, I, I really get back into Battle Kid 2 in earnest. Um, but if I'm, I don't play Battle Kid 2 on Monday, I'll be back next Wednesday with uh, the next installment of NES Alphanumeric. 261 battle tank um not far off on tmnt mostly blown run impress oh cool thank you yeah I'll, I'll get there soon i think i'm gonna i just need to practice i need to, to play with like a long stretch of time i think badges are the nice thumbnails i'm making for the castlevania ndrs that's cool the the videos the videos are also good badges i mean and i like trying to get like a, a recording of me doing a run of a game um as a kind of a record of having done it so that's kind of the that's kind of the same thing. You can buy that Alucard uh, shield, Omega Ace. That's your badge. Taking the drums a nightmare. I'll get it. Thank you. I, yeah, I'm probably gonna try to record it. I'm probably gonna play it offline. I'll probably record it. Um, I don't mind playing it online. It's just can be harder. You know, it can be hard. It can be different. A different playthrough if I if I'm live. Um, but I may record it um, if I can. Um, maybe upload it with commentary at some point or uh, if i get close but don't finish it then maybe i'll do another stream and i'll try to finish it on stream that kind of thing but uh yeah thank you again so much I'm, I'm, i feel like we we collectively have beaten this game although i guess three of us have beaten this game now four of us have beaten this game zombies beaten this too um in here so um yeah you know we uh we did it <laughs> All right, I'm gotta, I gotta, I gotta sign off and get to the bed. But you guys have a good rest of the week. Have a good uh, weekend. I will try to catch some of your stream on Friday night Omega Ace. I'm not entirely sure what I'll be doing. I know we're celebrating a friend's birthday, uh, 40th birthday this weekend. Uh, so I'll be doing some of that. And I have a friend coming in from out of town. So I'm gonna try to meet up with her and her, um, her boyfriend and their friend for dinner. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, need to get Mr. Matthews on this now. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, this was a pretty, pretty good game, actually. Um, yeah, good night, folks. Thank you again so much for hanging out. Yeah, take care, you're not Alexander. Thank you again. I uh, hope the rest of, uh, your shift goes well. Alright, good night. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>